Item number SCP-4793, Object Class Euclid. Site Responsible, Site 20. Director, Dr. Jack Hargraves. Research Head, Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Assigned Task Force, MTF Upsilon 11, Security Level 3. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-4793 is to be contained within a standard humanoid containment cell with its furnishings modified to be permanently affixed to the floor and walls. SCP-4793 must be escorted to the Site-20 Medical Wing at 700 every morning of Procedure 4793. SCP-4793's first daily meal should be given after this procedure takes place. SCP-4793 is not permitted contact with the following ring outside of testing. Any materials used in the construction of modern or historical armor or weapons. Note, materials such as leather, Kevlar, steel, etc. Any form of weapons, including items that could conceivably be used as improvised weapons, such as the leg of a desk or bed. A Foundation agent is to remain at the location of SCP-4793-A at all times. Description SCP-4793 is the entity that emerged from the relief coughing on SCP-4793-A. SCP-4793 is a male human that stands 1.92 meters tall. The subject appears to be in the late 20s and has been confirmed to be of Greek descent by genetic testing. However, blood samples showed a previously unknown type of red blood cell within SCP-4793, identified by a series of gold-colored filament running throughout the cell. Note, DNA within these cells is only 95% similar to humans and composes approximately 32.3% of the red blood cells present in SCP-4793's body. SCP-4793 has demonstrated high cellular reproduction within the body. If injured, the fibroblast present within SCP-4793 will produce collagen at an extremely accelerated rate, usually closing the wound within two minutes. Within the next 24 hours, the damaged tissue will completely heal, with the resultant cells being 4% more durable than the originals. However, the cytokine, note, known as transforming growth factor beta, that manages the healing process fails to end mitosis. Unless additional damage is received in a different part of the body, the original site will rapidly begin to generate tumorous growths. To hinder this, SCP-4793 must have one liter of blood drawn by Site-20 medical staff. Designated Procedure-4793 every 24 hours. Because of this, SCP-4793 requires a higher level of nutrient intake to facilitate the production of red blood cells. It should be noted that SCP-4793 does not require, as all biological processes in the subject are 80% more efficient than in non-anonymous humans. Currently, this has been studied to see if it can be replicated and refined for medical applications. Any material that could recently constitute a weapon or form of armor will undergo a series of near instantaneous transmutations upon contact with SCP-4793 into something that fits the formal definition of weaponry or armor. No material is gained or lost during the transformation and it has proven incapable of generating complex weapons like firearms or integrating electronics into created armor. SCP-4793 maintains that this effect is completely involuntary. In all instances where this effect was triggered, accidentally or by foundation interference, SCP-4793 has immediately attempted to remove the object from the person. Additionally, they possess advanced combat capabilities, mostly pertaining to physical combat. It is unknown if this is anomalous in nature 
or related to SCP-4793's past. SCP-4793-A is a steel located inside of a cave formation within a mountain in southern Greece. Although it displays no major anomalous properties, it has been marked as the origin site of SCP-4793 and has thus been placed under surveillance to prevent interference from any members of the public. Prior to the events of March 1, 2016, the steel showed a relief coughing of a man wearing the traditional armor of Spartan Hoplite during the Golden Age of Greece, approximately 500 to 300 BCE. On the opposite side of the steel is an inscription of an ancient Greek tale previously unknown to the modern historical community. Attached file, field operation transcript of the offense that led to the discovery of SCP-4793. Mission report, 1st of March, 2016. Exploration video log transcript, date, March 1st, 2016. Exploration team, MTF Upsilon 11, Avalon's Wake. Location, a mountain cave in the south of Greece. Objective. The termination of a team of mercenaries employed by the Chaos Insurgency and seizure of any anomalous items possessed by said operatives. Team Lead Captain Holly Shaw Team Members Warrant Officer Robert Jenkins Lieutenant Commander Ashley Crawley Warrant Officer Jake McCallaway Chief Warrant Officer Siegfried Ace Zimmerman Begin Log Camera opens across a mountainous vista. The wearer adjusts the camera fitting slightly. A small team of MTF operatives are gathered outside the mouth of a cave. The corpse of a chaos insurgent is seen leaning against the crate. Idiot didn't even see us coming. I guess that's karma, huh, Captain? Don't jinx us! Intel says there's at least five hostiles ahead of us. What do you think they're looking for out here? We up these mountains after that bid with the church back in 98? Who knows? We're just here to clean it out. Shaw turns to face the camera. Ace, you're on point for this. Ready to clear out some CI mercs? It what gets me out of bed. The camera abruptly turns and Zimmerman enters the cave. After a few seconds, the camera switches to low light imaging. The path is barely large enough for any of the operatives to pass through. After five minutes of traversal, the ledge that they arrive on rings a pit that descends three stories down. A natural slope leads around the edge of the pit, connecting the ledge to the floor. A waterfall flows through the ceiling, and large dynamite dot the ledge. Zimmerman quickly makes a way to one, followed by Shaw and Crawley. Jenkins and McCalloway are seen hiding behind one of the opposite side of the opening. Holy crap, did you see that? Guess the CIs are into something. But what? What do you see? I don't know what to call it. Zimmerman needs out from outside his cover. Below lies a stone steel bearing a raised coffin of a Greek soldier wearing the traditional armor of a Spartan hoplite. Surrounding it is a makeshift cap with several fluorescent bloodlights pointed at the pillar. Several mercenaries are seen milling about. That's one hell of a monument? Wait, look at that! Something's happening! Hold tight! Two Chaos Insurgents are seen using pickaxes to unearth more of the steel as music plays nearby on the speaker. One man stops abruptly and lets out a scream. The other man stops sticking and walks up to him. Damn it, Jackson! How do you cut yourself again? Freaking hell! Be more careful! I'm sorry, Chris. I just got distracted. It's bleeding an awful lot. Then why have we done something? Not the p 
pillar! Are you freaking insane? We don't even know what this does! Christ, you're useless! Stand by, team. Jackson just introduced this thing to human blood, so be ready for anything. There goes the element of surprise. Crap. What are your orders, Captain? We've got high ground, and they're just a bunch of civvies playing dress-up. Stand by. Those mercs are afraid of that pillar, and we don't want to rush into. Captain Shaw is cut short by a flash of light from the statue. Yells of surprise can be heard from the insurgents below. A human wearing the same armor as the soldier depicted on the coffin falls to the ground, landing on its knees. It is quickly surrounded by several insurgents, who all point automatic weapons at it. The pursued leader moves closer to it. Stand the frick up. If you make so much as a move towards me or any of my men, we'll fill you with holes. The unknown entity moves her hand covered with blood to its mouth, tastes it, and coughs for several seconds. You speak Greek. What? We're using English! Now stand up! I don't know where I am. Who are you? Welcome to your new family. I promise if you're good for business, you'll always have a place here. Otherwise, you're getting shipped to MCND. I'm sure some rich frick would love a little Greek action figure. Now I'm sure you need some motivation. CI-3 fires a low-caliber sidearm into the back of the unknown entity's exposed leg. To the cheers and laughs of the assembled insurgents, the entity cries out in pain and collapses as CI-3 turns away. Pack him up, boys! The unknown entity pushes itself up and looks at CI-3. Please, just let me go. I don't want to fight you. Don't make me. I changed my mind. Rough him up, boys. Hate to have to make him a fuss on the ride back. Two mercenaries move into a salty entity. I'm sorry, Anna. The unknown entity rolls into a combat stance and sweeps the leg of the closest combatant and drives its fist upward into their jaw. It then kicks out at the closest person and a crack is heard as its greaves make contact with the spine. Jesus frick! Open fire! Five bullets reflected off the entity's armor as it closes the distance between itself and the remainder of the squad, cutting itself out of the line of fire. What the frick did he just lay out? The unknown entity begins to work its way through the line of soldiers, grabbing CI-4 by the throat and the groin. It slams him towards the wall. The capital of vest on CI-4 slides off and wraps around the chest of the entity, intermingling with the bronze chest plate. Can you fix hit it, bitch? Rolling backward and propelling itself with its hand, it lands a two-footed kick to the solar plexus of CI-5 and launches him backward. Regaining its footing, the entity grabs CI-2 by the collar of his vest and pulls him into an embrace. CI-3 levels her machine gun to fire and the entity turns abruptly, taking 13 shots to its exposed back. She, she was going to shoot me! Promising, the entity renders CI-2 unconscious with a headbutt. CI-1 charges the entity with a pickaxe. Just die already! The pickaxe embeds itself in the entity's side and staggers it. Looking up at CI-1, it punches him directly in the face. A loud crunch is heard, and CI-1 is sent stumbling backward. CI-3 steps back and levels her gun again. The entity pulls the pickaxe from its side and stands up with some effort. What are you? The wound on the entity's side has begun to close and the spray of blood slows. I am tired fighting. The entity throws the pickaxe, which pierces CI-3's firearm and pins it to the wall of the cave. She lets out a shout and falls to the ground. CI-3 crawling backward towards the steel. Please, this is a misunderstanding. Do you want money? Power? I can give you both of those. I can give you anything you want. Please, don't. 
The energy swiftly brings both its hands together and strikes her temples. The only sound in Catherine are the moans of wounded personnel, and a bullet-ridden speaker that continues to loop, Don't fear the reaper. Hey, Captain, what's your call? You can't take this thing. Look what it did to those guys. They didn't stand a chance. All right, I'm making the call. Weapons down. Leave them behind. We're gonna talk this out. Frick, that's insane! Do you have a better idea, Jake? Shut up and move out. All of you. MGF Upsilon 11 remove their weapons and make their way to the slope leading to the bottom of the pit. As soon as they reach the bottom, the entity assumes a fighting stance after scooping a knife off the ground. Captain Shaw motions for the team to remain behind her. Hey, hey there. Shaw raises her hands to show she's unarmed. We're not here to hurt you. We're all unarmed. Who are you? Where am I? We're the Foundation. We keep people safe. You're under a mountain in Greece. Are you crying? Uh, I didn't want to do this. I... I... Hey, it's okay. Quality. Call for extraction. We've got something. We're already on its way. What's your name? Un... Androclus. Androclus. We're going to take you someplace safe. We'll get everything... Oh, sort it out then. Hallgraves is gonna love this. And no. Mission report. The unknown entity, later reclassified as SCP-4793, was transported back to Site-20. Analysis of the cave and steel are available in Research Log 5. Of the eight Chaos Insurgency targets at this location, one was terminated by MTF Epsilon-11, and seven were incapacitated by SCP-4793. All surviving insurgents were stabilized and transported to Redacted. Interview 1 Interviewed SCP-4793 Interviewer Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick Forward Initial interview with SCP-4793 after recovery. Begin log. Hello, my name is Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick, and I will be conducting this interview with SCP-4793. Today is March 28th, 2016, and is currently 11 a.m. Hello, SCP-4793 leans in close to the microphone on the desk. Do I, uh, have to be this close for it to hear me? The people I came here with had theirs really close to their faces. Oh no! It'll pick up your voice just fine. Just sit back and relax, SCP-4793. Who's that? It's just a number we've assigned you, just to make sure all the paperwork ends up in the right place. Okay. I've got a couple of questions for you. Little things to get out of the way. I'll answer to the best of my abilities. So you know, I don't know much about where or when I am. Well, that actually leads to my first question. How do you learn to speak English? English? We're speaking Greek. So, everything I say, you hear in Greek. Yes, it's all Greek to me. I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Now, how do you end up within that steel? I don't know. I don't remember much before you guys showed up. Flashes of things. Emotions. Tiny details, like the rough sketch of a person, but nothing. SCP-4793 grabs the edges of the desk and squeezes. Solid. Does that make sense? It does. Traumatic events can often seal away memories. While I've never had anyone like you as a patient, I don't think it's permanent. You spent a long time under that mountain, didn't you? I think... Everything is so... Different now. I mean... 
How could I even learn about everything I've missed? Metal birds, horseless chariots. Well, if you're well behaved, we've been more than happy to provide you with books and other media. But, as I said, you'll have to follow the rules. Is this an exception, or do you do this for everybody you dig out from under mountains? We try to provide certain amenities for sapient anomalies, ethical treatment, if only everyone we brought here had your sense of humor. I saw the tape of your recovery, and after that, I'm having issues connecting this humor with the man I saw in the video. Oh, you saw that. I did. You showed incredible restraint, taking 14 shots across your body and a pickaxe to the abdomen, and you incapacitated all of them with non-lethal attacks. Why? Why would you do that to people who only wanted to hurt you? I don't want to fight. I know I used to, and I know I was good at it, but that's not who I am anymore. Anymore? I don't know if I can explain it. Remember what I said, a rough sketch of a person. I don't know if that's accurate. It was more like I saw a sparring city, but only for a few seconds. And remembering everything about who you used to be would be like asking you to draw this city. Exactly. As soon as I woke up, I got that flash and I just... SCP-4793 is silent for almost a minute. I knew I didn't want to be him. But you are him. I know I was him. But everything that made me him is gone. Like a hearth where the fire's gone out. But maybe in a good way. And based on this flash, who was he? I think he was somebody who would have killed everyone in that room if he needed to. SCP-4793 is silent for over a minute. Do you have any other questions? Not right now, but we'll talk again soon, okay? I look forward to it. End log. Closing statement. SCP-4793 was provided with several books on history and the modern era due to its compliance with all instructions prior to this point. As of March 29th, 2016, there is no update on the transcript on SCP-4793-A. Archived correspondence in regards to SCP-4793 from Jack Hargraves to Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Subject, Combat Testing, SCP-4793, Date, 7th of April, 2016. Message, Dear Dr. Fitzpatrick, I recently came across the report from the Greece mission, mislabeled and sitting at the bottom of my inbox. If I didn't know any better, I would think you were hiding things from me again. We've argued at length about the ethics of using anomalies for offensive purposes, but at the end of the day, I'm still the site director. I've scheduled testing on SCP-4793's combat skills for April 15th, and you are more than welcome to attend. However, if I find out you've attempted to deceive me in regards to any anomalies contained at Site-20, I will terminate your position. This is your only warning. Regards, Director Jack Hargraves. From Eleanor Fitzpatrick to Jack Hargraves. Subject, regarding combat testing, SCP-4793. Date, 8th of April, 2016. Message, Director, while I may not have all the knowledge that a site director might, I cannot begin to stress how bad of an idea I believe this is. While SCP-4793 was able to perform as they did in the footage, this does not mean we will be able to replicate it here or anywhere else. It is my professional opinion that exposing SCP-4793 
to a simulated combat situation will be detrimental to their mental health. I know you're set on it, but this mission you're on? Trying to remake Omega-7, adding somebody to Alpha-9, it's like catching lightning in a bottle. Perhaps we should let old ghosts lie and old dreams die. Sincerely, Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Combat Testing Logs 15th of April, 2016 Testing Video Log Transcript Date, April 15th, 2016 Observation Team Site Director Jack Hargraves Project Lead, Eleanor Fitzpatrick Subject, SCP-4793 Objective Determine SCP-4793's combat capabilities in a controlled environment the tests will include unarmed melee combat, melee weapons. Safety measures include the presence of MTF Epsilon 11, Avalon's wake, as well as several remotely activated explosives attached to SCP 4793's neck and wrists. Observers will be separated from the subject in an attached room. Begin log surveillance footage from a camera within. Site-20's indoor firing range. A door opens and Captain Holly Shaw enters with SCP-4793, who is wearing explosive restraints. All right, Andrew, SCP-4793. These things on your wrists, if you step out of line or present a danger, they're going to go off. Do you understand? Yeah, but isn't just some more physical tests like before. The glass between the range and the observation room is illuminated from behind. Dr. Hargraves and Dr. Fitzpatrick can be seen. Ah, here's the man of the hour. SCP-4793, Mr. Androcles himself. Do you mind if I call you Androcles? Sir, that's against protocol. Eleanor, I'm the protocol in Site 20. I... Like that, it's been a little while. That's the spirit! Now we've got a couple of tests we're going to run through today. I was just recently made aware of your, how would I say, peculiar abilities. I'd like to see what you're capable of. Like, more running or lifting. Oh <laughs> no, no, we're going to be testing your combat abilities. Look at the table on your left. You'll find a padded baton. Pick it up. Please, I don't want to fight. He don't get a choice here. Pick up the baton, Androcles. Harley has volunteered to be your sparring partner. I hope you'll find her skills challenging. Captain Shaw picks up the baton and places it in SCP-4793's hand. There's no way around this. Just give him a show. Captain Shaw pulls out her baton and steps back several meters. Bring it on! Afraid of dancing with a girl? Afraid I'll hurt you? Please, I don't want to do this. SCP-4793, if I have to tell you again, there will be consequences. I know that Dr. Fitzpatrick got some hooks for you. Don't you want to keep those? SCP-4793 grimaces and puts their arms into a fighting position. Perfect! Begin! Captain Shaw and SCP-4793 begin to circle each other. Captain Shaw lashes out with a baton in an attempt to test their defenses. SCP-4793 weakly deflects the blow and retorts with a slow attack on the left flank. You're not even trying, are you? SCP-4793 thrusts towards Captain Shaw's chest, circling their guard. Shaw breaks the grip and disarms them. For frick's sake, you aren't gonna make a fool out of me, CP-4793. Put a little effort on it, or I will detonate those braces of yours. I know you probably won't mind too much, but Miss Shaw is very much in harm's way. Captain Shaw's face shows visible worry. Look, if you don't... Try a little. I'm gonna end up with five doctors picking metal out of my chest. Don't screw this up, okay? What if I hurt you? I don't want... This isn't about what you want anymore. If you don't fight, I'm gonna get hurt worse. 
So, think about somebody other than yourself, and pick up your baton. Captain Shaw launches towards SCP-4793, who walks out of the way and retrieves the baton. Shaw strikes at the chest, which is deflected towards the ground. SCP-4793 responds with a flurry of blows across Shaw's right side. You aren't actually going to put Holly in danger, right? Of course not, but they don't know that. They need motivation. Ten minutes passed. Both participants are sweating, and Captain Shaw is breathing heavily. No definitive blow has been struck. SCP-4793 swings at Shaw, locking their batons together. You're good. Who is your master? <laughs> I've had a couple. Did a lot of martial arts. And? Disengages and swings at SCP-4793's head. Fencing before joining the military. SCP-4793 relocking batons and pressing Captain Shaw against the wall. You're a better fighter than I thought. You're understanding me. Captain Shaw slides her left foot behind SCP-4793 and grabs her left shoulder. Twisting her body, she slams them into the ground. I... You're right. Congratulations, Androcles. You're the first person I've ever seen put Holly on her back foot. Not alone against the wall. That's enough for the day. But we've got a lot of work to do. End log. Summary. SCP-4793 was able to perform exceedingly well against Captain Harley Shaw. While initially requiring motivation, SCP-4793 became engaged in the exercise when presented with a threat to Captain Shaw's life. Director Jack Hargraves has assigned Captain Shaw to work with SCP-4793 on a weekly basis to establish a connection that can be utilized if needed. Archive correspondence in regards to SCP-4793 From Jack Hargraves To Eleanor Fitzpatrick, Harley Shaw Subject Project SCP-4793 Date 3rd of August, 2017 Message Dear Dr. Fitzpatrick and Captain Shaw, I do not know what to say other than your work has been very disappointing. You've had over a year to produce results. We are not a hotel, and you are certainly not here to pamper and play with SCP-4793. This is a weapons program. We are attempting to give humanity the tools it requires to keep the flame alive. Perhaps we need a new sense of direction. You may continue your work, but do not expect me to sit idly by while you squander resources. I will be watching you. A new project is starting soon. But until then, expect me to push SCP-4793 harder than ever. Regards, Director Jack Hargraves Interview 112 Interviewed SCP-4793 Interviewer Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick Forward Weekly interview with SCP-4793 Begin log Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick conducting the weekly interview with SCP-4793 how are you feeling today? Good, Dr. Fitzpatrick. It's finally starting to feel like home. Curled up with my books and these movies. I'm starting to feel like a philosopher. Oh, what I wouldn't give to just curl up all day with a book for once. I'd offer to trade with you, but I don't think you'd like the daily trips to the medical wing or sparring with Hall, I mean, Captain Shaw. Oh, how's that going? Any changes? I trust Captain Shaw. She's not going to hurt me, and I won't hurt her. But Dr. Hargraves has started switching things around. He keeps trying to push me past where I'm comfortable. And if I mess up, he gets angry and threatens Captain Shaw. God, what is he trying to do now? Well... 
He'll add somebody new or change something like a new weapon and I'll freeze up. Freeze up? Like a nervous reaction? Does this change make you anxious or scared? No, I'm not scared. I just feel this rush, almost like an instinct, and it scares me. I don't understand, so you know, uh, what is it called? I just read about it. Your brain makes it, I think, something about life or death. Cortisol? Adrenaline? Yes, adrenaline. So you know that rush, it just feels dangerous. Like, if I let it run its course, I might hurt somebody. Are you sure it's not just a rush of adrenaline? What else could it be? Perhaps it's your memories. I know we haven't made progress with those, but... If that's the case, I don't want them. You don't want to remember. Don't you want to know more about who you were? Is it worth it? I mean, right now, all I know about who I was, I learned just as I woke up, and I didn't take it. If the only time I can feel them is when I'm fighting, perhaps the me I was isn't a good person. I understand, but... I'm sorry, but I like this version of me. The me that reads books and watches television. The me that tells jokes to you. I don't want to be anyone else even if that's the real me. And nobody can fault you for that. I'm sorry. Can we talk about this later? I'm too overwhelmed by it. Let me give it some distance and we can talk about it later. That would probably be good. I'll do some reading and you can collect your thoughts. Now, what have you been reading? Well, I've been reading a textbook on world history. Again, I could probably teach the class by now. Is it possible to get any fiction, something light-hearted? Oh, I can think of a whole host of books. And my son's been reading something called Jojo's. I'll run them by censors. Thank you so much. End log. Closing statement. SCP-4793 displayed reluctance to attempts to restore their memories. Following this interview, SCP-4793 was provided with 12 new books. Archive correspondence in regards to SCP-4793 from Jack Hargraves to Eleanor Fitzpatrick Subject SCP-4793 Date 22nd of August 2018 Message Dear Dr. Fitzpatrick The levels you go to subvert my expectations are truly astounding. I've seen virtually no progress with SCP-4793 since our first meeting with him. But, for your own good, Project X-06 is taking up more of my time as it gets closer to completion. Good thing I could multitask my weapons programs, given how poorly SCP-4793 has turned out. But, by all means, keep me informed. Regards, Director Hargraves. From Michael from Translations to Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Subject, that's deal in Greece. Date, 22nd of August, 2018. Message, I'm sorry, this isn't more clear. I was only able to transcribe maybe a third of it, and I'm not even sure if it's in text. I could have sworn I saw sentences change when I look away, but my photographs don't lie. There are some parts I put together through context clues. But a lot of this is something older than Greek. Maybe anomalous itself, so I'm forwarding this to the Anima Linguistics Department at Site 37. Gather around me, children. I will tell you the story of sweet Androcles. Fierce as a pride of lions, and as cunning as a pack of wolves, he lived for nothing but battle. 
He was beloved by his countrymen and feared by his enemies, so much so that Ardes himself strode down for Olympus to challenge him to single combat. For ten days they fought a terrible duel, their blades cutting earth into islands, the sparks turning mountains into forges for Hephaestus. Impressed, he granted Androcles a boon. So long as he fought, he would never know defeat or age, and by mixing his equal with Androcles' blood, Ares declared him kin to the gods themselves. SCP-4793 Combat Log 117 Combat Log Transcript Date 7th of July 2018 Subject SCP-4793 Objective Continue to explore SCP-4793's martial abilities Begin Log Video feed shows SCP-4793 and Captain Holly Shaw wrapping her hands with tape and checking the padding on the batons. Oh, Holly, you missed a finger. SCP-4793 taps Captain Shaw's index finger. Captain Shaw recoils slightly. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. You've never called me Holly before. Usually it's Captain Shaw or just Captain. Why the change? It's just... You and Dr. Fitzpatrick? You're probably the closest thing I have to friends. I'm sorry if I overstepped. I really don't care. I mean, I call you Androcles, but that's too much of a mouthful. Does Andy work? Well, Dr. Hargraves care. He's too busy with other projects to watch every log, unless I tell him to. Now are we gonna just talk or are we gonna dance? Captain Shaw and SCP-4793 begin to move around a circle in the middle of the floor. What do you mean by projects? SCP-4793 launches at Captain Shaw with an upper left flank with a strike to her left leg. Captain Shaw is sidestepping the blow and retorting with a jab. Hargrave seems to be trying to weaponize skips. I don't know if it's for brownie points or for thrills, but everything and everyone that comes here gets tested, deflects a throw, and kicks out with a left leg. SCP-4793 dances backwards. Why weaponized? Isn't being locked up better? Have you saw some of the stuff out here? A magic soldier is a pretty good idea. Show paces around SCP-4793. Do the Greeks have an apocalypse? A Ragnarok? Not really, but I did read about the Christian apocalypse last night, the Rapture. SCP-4793 swings their leg and pivots abruptly. Stuff like that? The Foundation's gotta stop that every day. That's why the old fires went to even the art with skips they can control. Shaw closes the distance and launches a series of attacks on SCP-4793. Why haven't they done that? SCP-4793 counters Captain Shaw's blows. <sighs> they did! An MTF called Omega-7 had a skip that was more animal than man. SCP-4793 going on the offensive. What happened? Shaw locking batons. They screwed up. He killed his men. You remind him of him sometimes. How? Wait, you knew him. I fought beside him, if you could call it that. I was gone before he snapped. You didn't answer me, Holly. SCP-4793 breaks the lock and stands still. Shaw leaning back and breathing heavily. You're both perfect soldiers, Andy. Keep full of crap that the rest of us can't even dream of, but you have morals. O76 was less human and more force of freaking nature. What makes you think that? You've been toying with me this whole practice. You could have ended the fight on the first move, 
but you didn't. You're not trying. Doesn't mean I. Don't challenge me on this. I know it when I see it. You're fighting because it means you get time out of your room and you get to see me. Captain Shaw's rings at SCP-4793. SCP-4793 dodges without looking. Shouldn't you be more scared with the things you've seen? No, I trust you. SCP-4793 launches in pun of increasingly faster attacks. Captain Shaw attempts to avoid them and ends up against the wall, barely able to come to the last blow by locking it at a hilt. SCP-4793 presses to her advantage, leaning into Captain Shaw until her faces are centimeters apart. No good man, Androcles. SCP-4793's arms go limp, causing Captain Shaw to fall forward and land on the ground. Arlabelle. Captain Shaw getting up. Hey, Andy, are you okay? Androcles? End log. Summary. After several minutes, SCP-4793 returned to his deeper state of consciousness. Examination by the medical team yielded no information, and an interview with Dr. Fitzpatrick was arranged. Interview 118. Interviewed SCP-4793. Interviewer Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Forward. Interview conducted following an incident during combat training. Begin log. What happened out here, SCP-4793? Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. I remembered something. What was it? Do you remember your past now? No, it was just one person. Her name was Audubel. She was my wife, I think. Is that everything? What triggered this? Please, don't rush me. I'm still processing this all myself. I'm sorry. I'm just worried about you. Holly's worried too. Really? Yes, you just froze, and nobody could get you to move or react. Thank you for your concern. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. But I'm here to discuss what happened with you when you're ready. Several minutes have passed. There was a woman. Her name was Olibel. And I loved her. From your past? Yes. We fought together. Like marital squabbles? No, like battle. That's where we met. I met my husband at a bar, but your first date sounds much more interesting. <laughs> I guess. Well, what triggered this? Was it boring? I think it was just what Captain Shaw said. You're a good man, Androcles. Just that phrase? No, it was more complex than that. The way we were standing, or how she said it. How do you feel about Holly Shore? I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. About anything. Supposed to feel? Hargraves wants me to be a weapon for him. I get that. And how are you processing that? What part of this is hard for you to understand? My wife's dead. Any friends I had are dead. The world I knew is gone. How do you even process this? I've poured my time into reading about everything that's happened, and it's just overwhelming. Could you expand on that a little? It was simple back then. If you fought, you knew that you were fighting for your king to protect your family. To protect your country. And now, I just read that the President of the United States overthrew the government of another country at the request of a food company. Can you imagine that? Did that actually happen? 
Father Marler and Eisenhower. I followed everything until I reached World War II. How can I understand what I can be fighting for? How do I even try to understand what matters in this new world? So, if I'm following, you're afraid to fight because you don't know what you're fighting for. And this is what's making it harder for you to work with Hargraves. I'm trying to explain why I'm complacent. In a roundabout way, I guess. I don't understand what's out here, or what I do out here. So living like this, it's far better. I'm starting to pick up on the analogy, and we got a lot more digging to do on this. So we'll pick this up next time we talk, okay? And all. Closing statement. Due to SCP-4793's confusion, they were placed under close medical care for the following week. Archive correspondence in regards to SCP-4793. From Jacqueline in Animal Linguistic to Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Subject, The Thing Michael Sent Me. Date, 14th of October, 2018. Message, Hey, finally got around to this. They unearthed a ton of old text and we've been kind of busy. Sorry. As he came to bear on the world, he met his match and a woman from a distant land. With skin of whitest sand, covered in blues from the ocean, she blazed in his eyes like Ilio's chariot. Together, the mountains bowed before them, but even as Ilio's arrow brought them together, an arrow split them apart. For jealous Ali's saw his favorite love something other than himself. With his guiding star gone, Androcles tore the bones of the earth itself, with his rage and lust for battle extinguished. He turned the battlefield into twin mountains. With his purpose lost, he entombed them forevermore. Not to do a job for you? but it sounds like this woman was a Pict. Note, a group of Celtic people who lived in modern-day Scotland. Don't know if that helps. Whatever you're doing is above my clearance level, but good luck. From Jack Hargraves to Eleanor Fitzpatrick. Subject, Project X06, 26th of December, 2018. Message. Dear Dr. Fitzpatrick, Success! I have fostered the creation of a new life form. It's a bit rugged right now, but with the right influences, I should have a viable candidate for Alpha 9 soon. Right now, all it needs is a mother. As such, I'm pulling you off the SCP-4793 project and moving you to X06. Effective immediately. The staff already assigned to the project will brief you more on this. But don't touch anything. We still don't know the extent of its abilities. Merry Christmas, Director Hargraves. Recovered from Dr. Fitzpatrick's draft folder. From Eleanor Fitzpatrick. To Unknown. Subject, Hargraves. Date, 26th of December, 2018. Message. He's planning something big. I'm going to see this secret project soon. We'll report as soon as possible. Recovered logs pre-deployment. The following logs were recorded prior to or at the moment of the containment breach. Combat log 131. Combat log transcript. Date 28th of December 2018. Subject SCP-4793. Objective Continue to explore SCP-4793's martial abilities. Begin log. The door to Site-20's indoor firing range opens. Captain Holly Shaw enters. SCP-4793 is already inside, leaning against the divider between shooting stalls. There's my favorite guy. It's been too long. 
SCP-4793 jolting up. Oh, hey, Holly. Sorry, I was lost in my thoughts. You've got a few more seconds to think. Then we'll start. And what are we doing today? More sparring? Not today. You probably won't like this, but we're going to take another look at firearms. Captain Shaw moves to unlock a large cabinet set into the wall. She pulls two revolvers out of the drawer. Oh no, I couldn't hear for a day after we shot hose last time. Well, you'll still be able to hear if you actually put your ear protection in right this time. How about we just bar? It's always easy, right? I know you're starring, Androclase. Once this is done, we can spar. 18 shots. That isn't that hard, right? Okay. Good. Captain Shaw hands SCP-4793 a revolver, taking their positions in the stalls. Both level with their firearms. Ready? Weapons hot. SCP-4793 fires off all six rounds in rapid succession. All the bullets pass through the center of the target. Captain Shaw has fired four rounds in the same time span, with her shots falling within half an inch of each other and a bullseye. Your stance is off. What do you mean? SCP-4793 slides in behind Captain Shaw. Reaching forward, they wrap their hands around hers. Feel where my foot is on the outside of yours. Yeah? It's too far out. A wide stance is good, but you're a little overextended. Taps her foot gently. Just a touch. SCP-4793 disengages and steps back as Captain Shaw levels her pistol and fires. The shot passes through the center of the target. Hell, you were right! Just trying to be helpful, Holly. Yeah, but you could just tap my foot. Huh, how about that? You got something you want to say? A portion of the ventilation falls to the floor. From the gap in the ceiling, a dark form emerges and jumps to the ground. Both Captain Shaw and SCP-4793 recoil. The creature tackles Captain Shaw, causing the stall to collapse on top of her. A gunshot is heard. Turning back towards SCP-4793, it starts to emit a series of inhumane laughs. What the frick is that? I don't know. My gun! It's by the wall! Captain Shaw points to the opposite wall where her firearm is laying. Got it! SCP-4793 dives towards the gun. He wrapped her fingers around it before being knocked back by the monster. SCP-4793 rolls into a combat stance, points it at the creature. Pull the trigger! <laughs> okay. SCP-4793 pulls the trigger and the revolver clicks. Frick! The creature presses the attack, bludgeoning SCP-4793 with its wings and scratching with claws. After kicking it off of them, SCP-4793 pulls the leg off of a metal table. Within a few seconds, it has morphed into a short sword. SCP-4793 pointing the weapon at the creature. Stop! I don't want to hurt you! The frick are you doing?! It's intelligent. I think it's scared. The creature cocks his head at SCP-4793 and turns to face Captain Shaw, exposing a mouth full of crooked and sharp teeth. Andy, I don't think it's friendly. The creature launches at Captain Shaw, but SCP-4793 manages to intercept it. The creature is impaled on the end of the short sword and SCP-4793 excels sharply. What was that? SCP-4793 tosses the sword and body aside and begins to move the remnants of the stall off of Captain Shaw. I don't know. Some kind of nightmare. No. I mean, what you just did. I've never seen anything move that fast. I... 
listen to my instinct. Does that mean your memory? Yeah, it's all coming back, slowly, but you got bigger problems. Crap! Captain Shaw removes her radio from her belt. Hailing all channels, this is Captain Harley Shaw of Mobile Task Force Epsilon 11. We have a containment breach in progress. Hostile entities in unknown numbers. Please respond. Over. What is that? This is Lieutenant Commander Ashley Crowley. Code red going up. Over. Several seconds later, cluxons begin sounding. Attention, Epsilon 11. Running through the armory on level 3. Armory? A precaution. We don't know what we're up against. Understood. Are you okay with this? You could have died. I can't let that happen. All right, let's move. End log. Surveillance log. Project X06. Surveillance log transcript. Date 28th of December 2018. Subject. Holding in observation chambers, floor 25. Begin log. Dr. Eleanor Fitzpatrick is seen observing a single instance of Project X06 through a reinforced window. The creature is black by pedal and appears to be watching Dr. Fitzpatrick. What in God's name did he do here? The door to the chamber opens, startling Dr. Fitzpatrick. Psych Director Jack Hargraves enters. Ah, Ellie, glad you can make it. Don't you call me Ellie. This isn't a casual meeting. We're not friends. Who's saying we can't be? Everything that I stand for, all my moral and ethical codes, it's your delusions of grandeur made manifest. Oh, don't get self-righteous. All those pretty words don't make me care any more than the meaning. As for what I've done here, I've made humanity savior. Like hell you have! What's your problem, Eleanor? I may have created something that could save the world. An intelligent life form, capable of reproducing asexually and speaking. You're kidding me, right? You took Alien and mashed in Jurassic Park. Then you had the audacity to give it near-human level intelligence? Who gave you the right? Well, who could stop me? You? Yes, me! That monstrosity in there! I was sent here too! Director Hargraves turns his head towards the enclosure. All color drains from his face. We need to go. Now! What? What do you mean? There were two XO6s in that enclosure. Frick! We need to contact Sykesek! A ventilation shaft falls to the ground behind them. Falling from above, the X-06-1 spreads its wings and screams at the pair. <coughs> Dr. Fitzpatrick and Director Hargraves sprint towards the door and begin to fumble with the handle. Open the goddamn door, Jack! I'm trying! X-0-1-6-1 moves slowly closer observing them. Frick, frick, frick! Moving forward, X-061 slams a chair into the air. End log. Camera destroyed. Surveillance log. Level 3 armory. Surveillance log transcript. Date, 28th of December, 2018. Subject, Level 3 armory. Begin log. MDF Upsilon 11, Abelon's Wake, is seen surrounding the central table of the armory, along with SCP-4793. Lieutenant Commander Ashley Qualley is using a Foundation-issued laptop. I've got a lot of heat sticks from the basement and moving up quick. How long do they hit that deep block and jump up? Not long. I'm getting new hits every minute. I'm calling security. They can lock those sectors down. Not sure they'll help. These things seem to be moving through the vent. Yeah, the one we dropped was in the fence too. Golly, find out what this thing is. Already on it. Everybody, I want full tactical gear. Weapons? 
Pick your favorite, but grab a CQC piece too. It's gonna be tight once we hit maintenance. The group disperses, except for Quali and SCP-4793. Captain Shaw turns and pulls them aside. You need to grab a weapon. You're coming with us. I, I know. It's not too late to back out, but once we leave this room... I know, but I'm coming with you. I've lost too many people. I can't let it happen to you. Which is why you have to pull it together. If you freeze up, it's gonna get me or somebody on my team killed. SCP-4793 nods and walks towards a bin filled with broken ceramic plates and damaged Kevlar vests. After five seconds of contact with the container, the materials reconfigure themselves into a set of armor consisting of a chest piece, gauntlets and greaves. Several minutes pass as the rest of the team dons their gear. Crowley, got anything yet? Not yet. It doesn't seem to match anything on file. How fast to spread? Can't do everything at once. Check the Project X files. I don't think this is something we found. Rapid typing. Got something. Project X06. This doesn't look good, Captain. What's wrong? Whatever Hard Graves was trying to do, I don't think it worked. These things. There's something else. Explain. We're looking at hardened skin, advanced reflexes, and intelligence comparable to humans. Can't be that tough. Androcles killed one. He also picked up a grown man like he was a doll and threw him into a wall. SCP-4793 winces. How are there so many of them? He could have heard if they had a farm like this running. One sec. Okay, it looks like they're capable of reproducing after one feeding. Whatever there is on what a feeding means is covered in black ink, but they grow fast. According to this, that one you fought, that couldn't have been more than an hour old. That's weird. What's wrong? Something else? Yeah, I tried to send this file to Overwatch Command so they could inform our backup on the threat, but this file doesn't exist on the network. Rapid typing. Nothing exists on the network. Like the system is down? No! Hogface must have moved all our documents to offline. Local servers, according to this, the only things we've logged in the last nine years were a handful of SCPs, all high profile incidents. 4451, the monster in Kansas City, and that thing in Dallas. Basically, anything with a POI or GOI involved. They must have recovered over 100 items that time. His weapons program. He wanted to keep it off the old five's radar. Bastard. Okay, what's on the most dangerous thing is still on Skipnet. What's a backup expecting? Rapid typing. A girl who makes her blood boil if she touches you. I'm going to try to get the site AI to move the X06 file to the main network and flag it as an active breach, but there are no guarantees. I have no idea what else Hargraves did to the site. Christ. All right, get up, Crawley. Crawley closes the laptop and opens her locker. SCP-4793 pulls Captain Shaw aside. Holly, this is a suicide mission. Yeah, I know. Then I have to come with you. Why? It's like you said, one magic soldier. But what if you lose control? What if you leave here as the old you? If you survive, it'll be worth it. Hey, Androcles, you're gonna grab a weapon or... SCP-4793 grimaces, then tears the door off of a locker, which becomes a small circular shield. He then pulled the metal legs of a chair, transforming them into copies. This isn't going to be easy. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Our backup is coming in blind. These monsters are smart and tough. But if it was easy, it won't be an Avalon mission. Freak yeah! We're all right! Body cam's on! We're rolling out! And no! Recovered logs. Containment breach. The following transcripts were recorded on the body cameras of MTF Upsilon 11 during the breach. 
Body camera footage. Warrant Officer McCallaway. Body camera transcript. Date. 28th of December, 2018. You, sir. Warrant Officer Jake McCallaway. T. Mobile Task Force Upsilon 11. Upsilon's Wake. Event. Containment breach. Multiple hostile entities. Risk level. Danger. Location. Site 22 of a remote foundation facility in New Mexico. Begin log. MTF Upsilon is in an express elevator bound for floor 10. Been a while since I fought beside a skip. Not since, well, him. 076? Yeah. Captain, how do we know he's not going to flip his crap and go all Omega-7 on us? Androcles isn't anything like 076. You've been there for every single thing we've run with him. Yeah, but every chicken's out. We're still all dead. Not much difference. Why do you just shut up? We don't need to think about this right now. Welcome to Floor 10, General Housing. The MTF departs. There are papers and the bodies of security personnel scattered around the hallway. Most of the lighting fixtures have been damaged and several are hanging from the sockets and flickering. Captain Shaw touches her earpiece. Holiday, bring up emergency lighting on Floor 10. The corridor is flooded with soft red lighting from several backup units. An X-06 is seen running in the far-off cross hallway. It's heading to the dorms. The MTF gives chase, heading for the dormitory. The door to the sector has been sealed, and a body of a staff member is leaning against it, with an X-06 latched onto it. Christ! Jenkins opens fire. The sound of the rifle reverberates off the walls. Three bullets strike the X-06 in the head, chest, and stomach. It emits a screech and falls to the ground. A pool of blood is rapidly spreading out from the hole in its stomach. Crawley leans down and checks the body. He's gone. I'm guessing it was exsanguination. Care to say that simpler? Blood loss. That thing drained him. That's why there's so much blood coming from it. It's a blood meal. What? Um, mosquitoes usually just eat pollen, but the females need a blood meal to actually make the casing for their eggs. I was reading about it last week. So, that's what feeding is. Crawley, how long till you can get this open? Few minutes. It's just a lockdown. Crawley pops the cover of a panel off with a knife. After examining it for several seconds, she lets out a sigh. Scratch that, they must have shot the lock on the other side. This thing's got more sharpness than circuits. How long? No promises, but maybe five minutes? Inhuman laughing is heard from several directions around the team. Company incoming! Weapons out! Jenkins, watch Crawley! Ace and I would take left! Andy and McCrawley take right! SCP-4793 and McCrawley make a defensive position. McCrawley shoulders his automatic shotgun and looks at SCP-4793. I don't know why Harley brought me along, but don't get me killed. Uh, I won't. Sound more sure about it. Look alive, I got shadows around. The sounds of gunfire are heard from behind the camera. A small pack of seven XO6s begin to move slowly down the hallway towards McCullaway and SCP-4793. Contact! McCullaway fires, the slug hitting the leader in the head. The pack breaks formation. He fires two more shots, striking one in the chest and another in the throat. SCP-4793 moves forward and uses the shield to catch one in mid-launch, slamming it with enough force to crush it against the concrete wall. They pull their shield out and manages to cover themselves before another X-06 collides with them. Without looking, McCallaway draws his pistol and shoots the X-06 twice. Thanks. McCallaway downs another X-06 and turns his head. Not now! The last X-06 launches at McCallaway, pushing him aside. 
SCP-4793 brings the copy down and decapitates it. Damn! How do you make it look so easy? What? This? Eh, it's not. McCalloway begins reloading a shotgun. But it's them. Just just behind him. Or oh, my friends. Gotta be ready to make the sacrifice play. How's it going over there, Captain? Engage six hostiles. All down. You? Seven. How's the dog coming, Carly? Almost. Got it! The camera turns, and the MTF enters the sector. The hallways are clear, but empty. McCulloway punches the control pad on the inside of the door frame and destroys what's left of it. It sparks, and the door slams shut. Doesn't look like they made it in here yet. But where is everyone? Hiding. I wouldn't want to have to fight any of these creatures unarmed. Those dogs weren't so bad. A person's head appears in the doorway of a room. He soon emerges. Oh, thank God! It's not those things! Twenty-five people emerge from the rooms into the hallway. Is that Upsilon 11? Wait, is that 4793? We're here to pull you out. Is this everyone? Everyone that made it here before we had to close the doors. Zimmerman pulls Captain Shaw aside. Look, this is probably everyone still alive. I'm afraid you're... It's Dr. Fitzpatrick here. Eleanor Fitzpatrick. No, she got transferred to the X06 project, so she's probably... SCP-4793 shortest fall. A, we don't know if she was able to make it to the D block. Captain, we need to move. This is spreading fast. Roger that, Ace. People, we need to move. There's a freight elevator at the other entrance. Leads right to the... The sounds of grinding metal was heard. Jake, behind you! End log. Camera destroyed. Body camera footage. Chief Warrant Officer Zimmerman. Body camera transcript. Date. 28th of December, 2018. You, sir. Chief Warrant Officer Siegfried Ace Zimmerman. Team, Mobile Task Force Upsilon 11, Avalon's Wake. Event, Containment Breach, Multiple Hostile Entities, Risk Level Danger. Location, Site 20, a remote foundation facility in New Mexico. Begin log. Camera shows the hallway of the living quarters within Site 20. There are 25 staff members assembled in front of the MTF. Captain, we need to move. This is spreading fast. Roger that, Ace. People, we need to move. There's a freight elevator at the other entrance. Leads right to the... The sounds of grinding metal was heard. Jake, behind you! Camera sharply turns to warrant Officer McCalloway. The door behind them has been torn open and a large creature, designated X062, appears in the hole. It reaches in and grabs McCalloway, slamming his head off the top of the frame and pulling him into the darkness. Rick! Crawley! Jenkins! Andy! Get these people to the surface! Now! But! That's an order! Ace! With me! Zimmerman bolts the door and fires off a few shots at a fleeing creature. It's headed for the elevator! We need to get him back! Both Shaw and Zimmerman take off down the hallway. They reach an elevator shaft. Zimmerman shines his flashlight down the hole. It gleams off the creature, which shoots him a snarl before exiting the shaft. That's D-Block! There's no straight path down there. Gotta go through floor 11. Fick! The pair moved into the stairwell. Do you see the size of that thing? Yeah, what was that? Everything else here was just rigged up dogs. It was like one of those raptors from Jurassic Park. But bigger! They reach the bottom and take a second to catch their breath. Are you going in loud? Captain Shaw doesn't respond. Placing herself, she kicks the doorknob out and knocks the door wide open. Several X06s are in the room and look at the source of the noise. Loud it is! 
He levels his light machine gun and starts firing into the room. Captain Shaw joins him. Slowly, they begin to make progress across the floor. Halfway! Copy that! From behind them comes the sound of laughter as X-06s begin to emerge from rooms they passed by. More begin to fill up the way ahead. It's a trap! The big thing wanted us down here. Is there a way out behind? No, but we won't survive in the open. Move! The pair begin to run towards the laboratory. Zimmerman slams the door as the first X-06 catches up with him. Hold the door! I'll find something! Captain Shaw begins moving a large bookcase in front of the door. That's not going to hold him. Help me flip these tables. We need a barricade. Several moments pass as they place tables on the side. The banging on the door gets louder and louder, and the bookcase begins to slide along the floor. What's our ammo look like? About 75 in the OMG. Got two full mags for my rifle. Let's give him hell. The door stops banging and the sounds of screams can be heard outside. What the frick was that? Over the next 30 minutes, the screams slowly fade to nothing. Another minute passes and the door is kicked open. Zimmerman and Captain Shaw fire off several shots, knocking the figure backward. Do you think that's... A figure flies into the room, kicking the table and setting the pier several meters back. Captain Shaw rolls into a firing position, and the camera pans to reveal a humanoid, covered in blood and deep cuts, standing over them. Andrew, please! SCP-4793 looks at Captain Shaw with no sign of recognition. They lift their copies and raise their shield in a defensive position. Wait! It's us! It's Harley! SCP-4793 blinks for several moments and falls to their knees. Oh, gods! Did I hurt you? I'm so sorry. No, we shot you. How are you still walking? You should be dead. Where are the others? It was a trap. They wanted to split us up. As soon as we stepped out on the other side, we got hit by one of those big guys and swarmed with the dogs. We only lost two of the doctors, I think. But Crawley got hurt really bad. She and Jenkins are up top right now. Why aren't you with them? They set a trap for us. It meant you two were walking into an ambush. I... I had to. What about Ashley? What happened? One of the big ones nearly took her arm off. The dogs are dangerous in numbers. But those things are just... I don't know. Zimmerman stands up and starts walking over to the door. You didn't even recognize me when you came in. I'm worried about you. You need to get out of here. No. I need to find Dr. Fitzpatrick. Even if she's... And I need to keep you safe. I don't need to be kept safe. Hey, Harley, who should come see this? Zimmerman turns and steps into the hallway as Captain Shaw walks over to him. The hallway is filled with dead or dying X-06s and X-062s in an unbroken line that leads into the open area where they had come from. Chunks of flesh and bone are sticking to the walls and a thin layer of blood covers the floor everywhere. Did you do this? I, I had to. It was. Look, Harley, you know what this reminds of? Yeah, I know. He's extremely dangerous. If he loses it, do you think we'd be able to stop him? I don't want him to come with us. I agree. There's a but at the end of the sentence. Spirit. He's our only chance of getting to D-Block. He's probably the only reason we're alive right now. Okay. SCP-4793 walks towards them. We should move. 
They stepped past Captain Shaw and Zimmerman, keeping her head looking at the ceiling. Her breathing gets more rapid. The MTF follows, and they reach the other staircase in three minutes. Ready for another adventure? No. Too bad. You pick one hell of a day. And no. Body camera footage. Captain Shaw, 1. Body camera transcript. Date, 28th of December, 2018. User, Captain Holly Shaw. Team, Mobile Task Force, Upsilon 11. Avalanche Wake. Event, Containment Breach. Multiple hostile entities. Risk level danger. Location, Site 20 of a remote foundation facility in New Mexico. Begin log. Captain Shaw descends the staircase and pauses briefly at the door before opening it. The hallway is clear, but a barricade made of chairs and tables sits at the end. The bodies of several X-06s are lying in front of it, as well as several corpses clad in orange jumpsuits. Damn, I think I turned my body cam off. Looks like the D-Class put up a fight. If they didn't block the elevator, they only boxed themselves in. The trio climbed the barricade as they turned the corner. They see the open elevator shaft and an X-062 lying motionless on the floor in a pool of blood. That's the one that grabbed McCarway, but where is he? But the question, what killed it? Who the frick's there? Where are Captain Shaw and Zimmerman shoulder their weapons and move towards the opening to the D-Class containment block. Hiding behind makeshift barriers, a mixture of D-Class and security officers can be seen. At the sight of the MTF, they lower their weapons, which are mostly knives and sharpened broom handles. Oh crap! A frickin' MTF! Never thought I'd be happy to see you, fricks. You here to spring us from this death trap? Are you guys... Working together? Well, yeah, we're mostly your friends here. None of the doctors really use human test subjects, so we mostly just play cards down here and shoot the crap. Yeah, Jung's over here's wife is pregnant, and he says once I get out, he's gonna make me third godparent. Several moments of silence follow. Nah, we're just messing with ya. Carlos humor. <laughs> It's man versus frickin' predator down here. Crap like D-class and gods don't mean anything now. Hmm, okay. But yes, we are here to pull you out of here. First, that thing in the elevator. Where's the man that was carrying? Oh, he's one of you. Follow me. Officer Jones moves to one of the cells, and Captain Shaw follows. One officer, McCalloway, is lying on a cot with bed sheets wrapped around his denim. A large blood stain is leaking through the cloth. A D-class is taking his vitals and is about to administer an unknown medication with a syringe. Well, hell, if it isn't my buddies. What happened to you? Well, that thing grabbed me, you know that. Knocked me out for a little bit. Woke up when it hit the floor of that elevator. Next thing I know, that damn thing gets warned. Left me a little parting gift, though. Gestures at a wound. Pauses and coughs heavily into his hand. When he pulls it away, it's covered in blood. The D-class put Captain Shaw aside. A friend's injuries are severe. That monster's claw caught him in the chest and almost suddenly punctured a lung. If he doesn't get a real doctor soon, he's gonna die. What were you about to give him? Morphine, he pulled it, as well as some other things, from a surgery suite upstairs before they overran the sector. Ace, can you help this man with McCalloway? I'm going to see if there's a way out. Captain Shaw turns and exits the cell, pausing for a moment. She begins to walk towards SCP-4793. A word, please. Hey, you're not okay, are you? No. I'm not. Do you see all I did back there? What I'm capable of? I don't want to be that person. 
Nobody wants to be that person. When we sent the D-Class up, you're going with them. At final. What about you, Ace? Shouldn't you beg for backup? What backup? By the time another MDF shows up, it'll be too late. We need to blow the reactor. But that's suicide. This isn't about what I want anymore. If I don't fight, a lot more people are going to get killed. And I'm coming with you. No, dying I can deal with. Watching you lose yourself. I can't. Captain Shaw turns away and walks towards Security Officer Jones. What's the fastest way out of here? The freight elevator. Jones points to the elevator doors in the back of the guard's office. Well, why haven't you used it? We don't have to cart for it if a D-Class got one. Yeah, I get it. But it can't work. So we're getting out of here now. A cheer goes up from the assembled personnel. A metallic crying is heard, and a lookout comes running back into the room. Guys, I think I'm trying to cut the uh, cord thing in the elevator. Captain Shaw removes her keycard from her belt and hands it to Jones. Get everyone in the elevator. We'll hold them off. End log. Body camera footage. Captain Shaw 2. Body camera transcript. Date. 28th of December. 2018. User, Captain Holly Shaw. T, Mobile Task Force Upsilon 11. Upsilon's Wake. Event, Containment Breach. Multiple Hostile Entities. Risk Level, Danger. Location, Site 20 of a Remote Foundation Facility in New Mexico. Begin Log. Camera opens to a series of barricades constructed out of cots and cell furniture and six D-class personnel are standing behind them. Armed with standard-issue handguns and shotguns, turning, the camera shows a security officer standing in the guard's office, surrounded by D-class. A man in a torn and blood-stained Euclid uniform and a set of unknown armor is standing near the entrance to the office. Jones, is that thing running? Yeah, wait centers say it's empty but it might take a little while running on emergency power. Copy that. All right, thanks for volunteering. It's about to get plenty in here. But we're going to hold to this line until that elevator gets to the surface. Is that understood? Hell yeah! This craft's like alien, but Ripley's got freaking SEAL Team 6 backing her up. Can't wait to drop some Xenos. You are really gone all about this. We are all Marines before this. Same squad and everything. Defensive measures are kind of second nature to us. If we get out this alive, I'm going to recommend a transfer to a task force for all of you. What's it like? Make Callaway from the adjacent cell. The benefits are okay. The grind sucks. But the job security? <coughs> Incredible. That's the worst joke you ever told, Jake. Maybe if you shove it up your ass, Ace, it'll last longer. A metallic trench is heard. They're almost through the cable. Once that's open, they'll probably push from the other sides. A ding is heard, and the camera pans to see the freight elevator doors open. The crowd of D-Class pushes inside, accompanied by several security officers. Jones, get as far from sight as you can. It's gonna get hot in here soon. A murmur goes up from the 8D-Class who are outside the elevator. SCP-4793 glimpses. But Site 20 doesn't have a nuke. We're gonna get improvise. The doors close, leaving only the MTF, 15D class, and SCP-4793 in the block. Several minutes pass as the cable continues to reverberate. Several of the D class begin to fidget. The cable snaps and the elevator plummets down the shaft. After a few seconds, the hand of an X-06 grabs the edge and begins to pull itself up. Here we go. MDF Chang Gang! Not an officially recognized mobile task force. Rig him up! XO6s begin to flood the room, attacking from the elevator shaft and the side. The D class and MTF members open fire. Reverse waves are killed or pushed back. Doctor, move McCarway to the elevator. Everyone else, start falling back! Captain Shaw fires at several 
XO6s and turns on another, and her guns and makes a click. She draws her handgun and starts moving back towards the door to the office. Four XO6 crawlers begin to move towards her, and Captain Shaw terminates two of them before tripping on an unknown obstacle. Holly! An XO6 jumps on Captain Shaw. She pushes her arm into its throat and it starts to claw at her. She pulls a knife from her belt and stabs it three times in the neck before shoveling it off of her. <laughs> Holly! An unknown force drags Captain Shaw backwards. The camera shows the battle is going poorly. Two of the D-Class have left their positions. One is lying motionless on the floor, and Zimmerman has switched to his shotgun. The camera begins to swing wildly as Captain Shaw is pulled closer to the office door. It's me! Stop fighting! Captain Shaw stands up. She looks at her arm. The sleeve is torn and it's bleeding. Get back! The lift should be here soon! The fighting main D-Class and Zimmerman sprint to the final barricade while Captain Shaw lays down suppressing fire. All seven begin to fire at the oncoming XO-6s. Where's McCallaway? Where's the vet? D-4534 stumbles out of a cell as an XO-62 lunges into the room. He folds the barricade and collapses on the ground. <sighs> Gave morphine. <sighs> he wounded. He grabbed. <laughs> a gunshot is heard, and the XO-62's arm falls out of the room as one officer, McCallaway, emerges from the cell, wielding his automatic shotgun in one hand and a sidearm in the other. Who's next? Come and friggin' get some! Adrenaline! Three 6062s and seven 606s converge on McCallaway, who begins to move towards the elevator shaft. The freight elevator dings, and the camera pans to see one of Officer Jenkins step out and fire through the glass window at the XO62s. Get the frig out of here! The waiting D-Class rush into the elevator, while the five surviving D-Class combatants move to provide fire support besides Jenkins. Jake! Zimmerman begins to move across the cell block and towards McCallaway. We need to go. Ace and I are going to blow the reactor. You won't make it there. Zimmerman has passed the doorway leading into the cell block and is only a few meters from McCallaway, who has sustained several severe injuries. An XO-6 lunges at Zimmerman, who hits it in the chest with a blast from a shotgun. McCallaway discards his firearms and draws a large combat knife from his belt as an XO-62 slashes him down his back. He turns and stabs upward into its skull. I'm ready. How about you? Gesturing to an XO-6. The hand of an XO-62 reaches up and grabs him Calloway's leg. He looks down at it, swears, and is pulled off his feet and into the elevator shaft. The Zimmerman dives and grabs his hand. He manages to hold McCallaway for a few seconds before being dragged into the shaft himself. Ace! SCP-4793 grabs Captain Shaw and pulls her into the office, slamming the door behind him. Friggin' hell! You can't save them! I have to kill all these damn things! You need to get a frickin' grip! Holly, remember the first thing you said to me. Hurry up! We can't hold them for long! Jenkins and the D-class combatants begin to back up towards the elevator. What? We're at the foundation. We keep people safe. Here's people. Keep them safe. Jenkins is inside, still firing into the XO-6s as they move closer. SCP-4793 pushes Holly and she stumbles into the elevator. Hold her! Don't let her out! They turn away and raise the sword and shield as the XO-6s pass the final barricade before the office. Several D-Class grab Captain Shaw and hold her. SCP-4793 turns back to look at Captain Shaw as the elevator doors close. Andrew Grease! I'm sorry. End log. Recovered logs 
post evacuation. The following transcripts were recovered following the evacuation of most surviving personnel. Body camera footage Chief Warrant Officer Zimmerman, 2. Body camera transcript Date 28th of December, 2018. User Chief Warrant Officer Siegfried A. Zimmerman, Team. Mobile Task Force, Upsilon 11, Upsilon's Wake. Event, Containment Breach, Multiple Hostile Entities, Risk Level Danger. Location, Site 20, a remote foundation facility in New Mexico. Impact detected, powering on. Camera shows the interior of an elevator. The walls are covered with blood and the ceiling is completely absent. The Site-20 storage depot can be seen, and a small fire is burning in a trash can. Several bodies are sprawled on the ground. An hour and thirteen minutes passed. <coughs> what? What happened? Twelve minutes passed. Footsteps can be heard. A man in a blood-stained and torn Euclid uniform wearing unknown armor and a helmet of unknown manufacture appears in the frame. Oh, there. I don't know what I was hoping for. <laughs> Not <laughs> yet. Ace, sweet Ephestos, you fell like 14 floors. And I'm feeling every foot. <laughs> what do you call me? Hephaestus, god of fire and metalworking? Why? <laughs> he was thrown off a mountain by his mother for being ugly and survived. I'd laugh if I was in any shape. It's Mikawe. No chance. But the bastard died as he lived. Stupid as hell and running straight into danger. Ares would have liked him. Is Holly safe? She's not with you. I pushed her into the elevator, told the D-Class not to let her out. So, what's the plan? I don't have one. Getting down here was pure luck. Finding you alive was a miracle. Can you walk? Zimmerman leans forward, then falls back down. I can feel my legs. <laughs> Just... Can't move them. Okay, I'm going to grab one of the carts and put you on it and call away. Then I'll get you to the freight elevator. SCP-4793 turns to walk away. That's not what I meant. The XO 6s I'm going to blow up the reactor. Yeah, but how? I don't know. But I have to. Several minutes passed before SCP-4793 returns with a depot cart. They pick McCallaway up first and help some men to his feet and walk him over. There we go. Why do you come back? For all you know, I was dead. You weren't going to leave McCallaway behind when that big thing grabbed him. SCP-4793 begins to push the cart. Zimmerman draws his sidearms and checks the magazine. Where do you get the helmet? Looks sick. R&D. It's a prototype for some kind of space program. Space combat. <laughs> I still can't believe humans went to space. Now we're getting ready to fuck up there. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <coughs> Yes, since you made it down here, you had to fight your way through. SCP-4793 is silent for several moments. Yeah. I didn't want to. Feels like more of me slipping away. Nobody ever said this job is good for your soul. <clears throat> Helps when the thing on the other side of the gun isn't human, but it never gets easier. How do you sleep at night? All the things you've seen, everything you've done. I don't. 
toss and turn every night. See a lot of faces. People I've killed. People who I've lost. You're fighting for something greater. That's what they tell you. Never helped me none. Nobody here died for a reason. And Hog creeps so rot in hell for it. The sound of twisting metal can be heard. Zimmerman privileged to look at SCP-4793. The metal bar used to push the trolley is bent severely. Hey, don't lose your soul. <laughs> You're a good man, Androcles. Maybe under different circumstances, we'd be friends. Maybe if I managed to get out of here, we could be. Zimmerman turns back. The freight elevator doors are open, and an X-06 with red markings is living around the inside. Zimmerman levels his handgun, but SCP-4793 pushes it down with a hand. What? He's not going to hurt you, but... I don't know how to explain it. SCP-4793 lets out a short whistle, but let's get you on that lift. The X-06 walks over to SCP-4793 as they push the cart into the elevator. Is there anything I can? Yeah. Do the body cam batteries look like... Just just with her hands. Zimmerman leans over and removes the battery from McCullough's body camera. One size fits all. <laughs> Good luck out there. If I don't come back, take care of Holly, and don't let anyone come in here. What do you mean, I have to do this, at any cost? End law. Camera footage. Mark II, Orbital Combat Helmet. Camera transcript. Date, 28th of December, 2018. User, unregistered. Team, not applicable. Begin log. And there we go. Hey, look at that, Arlos. I think it's recording again. Camera shows an upside down empty hallway. The camera is suddenly flipped and moved side to side. SCP-4793 moves her hand back and forth in front of the camera. Looking to the side, the field changes to an X06 with red markings. Designated X06A. It sticks its tongue out and flaps its wings briefly. Hello, whoever finds this. My name is Androcles, or SCP-4793. This is Onus. He's... are you, uh... uh never mind. Onus is a friendly X06. I don't know why every single one up till now has tried to kill me, but he just trotted over to me with his helmet, snapped me out of my... We're on floor 24. One below this, then two maintenance floors, and then the reactor. SCP-4793 begins walking towards a staircase. Entering the stairwell, he begins to descend the stairs. Nobody here need to die. There's no justice. Not glory. Just... SCP-3793 exits the stairway. The hallway is filled with the bodies of researchers, as well as several exosixes, who scatter after seeing them. Huh, that's... Never mind. Let's go, Alos. SCP-4793 begins walking towards the lab with the door ajar. Looking in, a broken security camera is lying on top of a set of monitors and a ventilation shaft lays on the floor. They keep walking. This place looks beat up. SCP-4793 looks down to see a security officer with several grenades laid out around them. Oh. X-06A runs into a lab and stops in front of a table. SCP-4793 enters and looks at the table where X-06A stopped. There are several large black spheres 
lying in an incubator. In a separate incubator, the remains of Red Sphere lie. SCP-4793 picks one up and examines it. Is this your egg? SCP-4793 looks at the label on the incubator. In his small handwriting, it reads, Blood sample, 4793. Purity, 100%. My blood? Wait, is that... The visits to the middle wing, it was... SCP-4793 continues to look around the labs for several minutes before the sound of scratching can be heard. They turn and head towards the source. A minute later, they come across an XO-6 scratching at a pile of rubble. SCP-4793 bangs the sword against the shield and it runs off down a side passage. Hello? Is somebody there? I'm behind this pile. My legs. I think they're broken. Please. Hold on. I'll take you out. SCP-4793 begins moving the steel and concrete chunks with her hands. Grabbing an eye beam, they prop the collapsing ceiling and move the final pieces out of the way. You. Oh, thank God. Antichrist, you came to save me. I'm not here for you. What else could you possibly be doing down here? Walking to my death. Watch my friends get hurt. Die. Losing pieces of my soul. And what? This kind of thing happens. We just rebuild. It's all your fault. For the greater... Shut up! Nobody here died for any reason other than your own arrogance. Director Hargrave stiffens up and pops himself up on his elbows. You're angry, aren't you? Unimaginably. <laughs> I'm already a dead man. Just finished the job. What do you? I see that blood. The notched blade. Oh, th those brand new scars. You're going to kill me. Don't wait. I was right about you all along, as a lie. <laughs> Go ahead. Prove me right. You, you're a killer. You love every second of it like a perfect killer. You just need motivation. I saw you cry when we pulled you out of the cave. Was that the first time? Tears of joy. Glad to finally hurt somebody again. <laughs> Did you even cry when Everbell died? The tip of SCP-4793's blade begins to shake, and the wreck to Hargraves lets out a harsh laugh. <laughs> what? Did your precious Harley die too? SCP-4793 launches towards Director Hargraves, but stops short. Oh, so you truly are a coward deep down. You aren't worth it. Can you bring anyone back? SCP-4793 reaches in, grabs Director Hargraves by the collar of his lab coat, and begins pulling him away from the rubble. Wait, what are you? And then you die down here would be the same as killing you myself. SCP-4793 drags Director Hargraves to the freight elevator and lets him go. They swipe a keycard and the machine begins to whirl. Pulling a knife from the belt, they toss it to Hargraves. Use this to defend yourself against a pet. They turn and walk away. Wait! You can't just leave me! At the Foundation found some I'm responsible! Then use the knife to kill yourself. Your life is in your own hands. Five minutes passed. After turning a corner, the camera shows XO6A scratching at the door. SCP-4793 starts jogging towards it. How do you say autos? SCP-4793 grabs the doorknob. It doesn't turn, so they punch it through the door. XO6A pushes through the door and enunciates a short phrase. 
Here, to help. Hey, good job, Alois. Uh, Andrew Cleeks? SCP-4793 looks into the corner of the room. Dr. Fitzpatrick, are you? Pushing the door open, the light reveals two junior researchers and two doctors hiding in the back of the closet. How did you find us? Look, it's another one of those things. Dr. Virgil pulls out a hand. Whoa, there's Arnold. He's with me. Actually, the reason I found you. The survivors get up and start to walk towards SCP-4793. Oh my god, you're covered in blood. <laughs> yeah. But we gotta move. The elevator should be here any second. And Hargraves won't wait. Dr. Fitzpatrick's eyes narrow. He survived? SCP-4793 begins to move towards the elevator. He wasn't worth it. The group walks in silence. Reaching the elevator, Director Hargraves looks up at him. Oh, Eleanor, you survived. Dr. Fitzpatrick kicks out, striking him in the head and knocking him to the ground. The Overseer sent me here to watch your pompous ass, and by God, you will answer for this every single death. It was for the... Dr. Virgil kicks him in the head. Right off! The door is open, and the junior researchers drag the unconscious director into the elevator, followed by the doctors. Dr. Fitzpatrick looks back at SCP-4793. Are you... I'm not coming. I've got to finish this somehow. Dr. Fitzpatrick steps out and embraces SCP-4793. Could you? SCP-4793 removes the helmet. Take this with you. There's a message on it. Of course, for Captain Shaw. Yes. For Holly. And Nog. Surveillance Log, Reactor, Floor Surveillance Log, Transcript, Date, 28th of December, 2018, Subject, Reactor, Begin Log, Camera Shows SCP-4793 and X06A Exit that Stairwell and Head to a Terminal, SCP-4793 Hesitates Briefly and Presses a Button, Hello, I am Holiday. Site-20's Maintenance and Facilities AI. How may I help you? Hi, Holiday. Can you do a sweep for life signs? Sweep complete. I found 752 life signs. How many humans? One. Thank you, Holiday. SCP-4793 and X06A exit the room. Powering on. Hallway camera. SCP-4793 continues towards the faulted doorway to the reactor room and slips inside. What the? Powering on. Reactor room camera. The room is filled with large clusters of black spheres and on top of the reactor sits a massive X06. Designated X063. It is covered in a scaly armor and has short legs and arms. As SCP-4793 enters, it slithers down and stands before them, its head brushing against the 15-meter-tall ceiling. Welcome, Androcles. How do you know my name? My father spoke of you often. You did him such a kindness. Your father, Hargraves. Did you know there's another Androcles? A Roman, but I digress. He plucked the thorn out of the lion's paw. Years later, when he was thrown into the arena by a cruel Caesar, the lion recognized him and spared his life. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> I am the lion. You saved my father, so I will grant you this boon. Leave now, and none of us will harm you. I know you have a loved one up above. What? So you can kill everyone? Kill? My short-sighted brother. We don't wish to kill anyone. Us, our father proclaimed. 
we will roam the earth, seeking and capturing the anomalous. Hard about everyone here. I walked through a graveyard to get to you. Unnecessary evil. How could you possibly justify this? We need numbers. The forces arrayed against us. Too many for one or two or a dozen of us to take alone. So you just killed with abandon. No death here brought us joy, but every man and woman in this building swore they would lay down their lives to protect the world. So you made a choice for them. They will live on as martyrs, heroes who will die to bring the world safety. Why did you call me brother? Our Father used your blood to create us. It holds the power that allows us to multiply with such ease, to grow as fast as we do. We are brothers in everything but name. I can't let you leave here, not after seeing this. How will you stop me? By sacrificing yourself? By losing yourself bit by bit as you track us all down? SCP-4793 punches the wall and removes the section of the rebar with a piece of concrete at the end. It transforms into a concrete great sword. I know who I am. I am Androcles, lover of Ares, warrior of Greece. But I am also Androcles, the protector and friend. <laughs> I know who I am, and nothing will change this. Takes a step toward X-063. What are you doing? SCP-4793 begins to run toward X-063. End Nog. Addendum. On December 28th, 2018, the central facility of Site-20 was destroyed in a nuclear explosion of unknown magnitude. All surviving personnel were treated for their injuries and transferred to Site-12, a facility in central Pennsylvania. While Site-20 undergoes reconstruction, despite the loss of structural integrity in the building, 737 of the 782 items contained at Site-20 were recovered. No X-06 entities were discovered during the sweep. In the reactor level, the hypothesized origin of the blast, portions of X-063 were found. No trace of SCP-4793 or X-06A was discovered. Using the control explosives, the remaining above-ground structure was collapsed and the pit was filled with concrete. At 20, the following message was found within a prototype Mark II orbital combat helmet in the days following the destruction of Site-20. View final message. Access granted. Camera transcript. Date, 28th of December, 2018. User, unregistered. Team, not applicable. Begin log. Camera opens to SCP-4793 sitting against the wall, the sword and shield sitting to the side. Hey, Holly, I hope this message gets to you. Somehow, it's been about two hours since I last saw you. I hope it isn't the last. SCP-4793 smiles weakly. I... I don't know what to say. So much to say. So little time. <coughs> I was born to a farmer and grew into a warrior. I battled Ali's to stand still. I won war single-handedly. Then I met my wife. We were set to claim the world. Two immortals who wanted to bring a chaotic world some semblance of peace. And then... Alice killed her, and I lost everything. And now I'm here, alone, adrift, a stranger surrounded by even stranger things. But within you, 
I see the spark I saw in her. A burning desire to make the world better. It makes me want to be better. And I don't know if you feel the same, or rather, I'll get out of here. SCP-4793 touches the eye. But I will fight for you. Die if I have to. SCP-4793 shifts position and reaches for the helmet. Tears can be seen running down their face. I love you. Ednog. Addendum 21. SCP-4793 is currently pending reclassification to neutralized. 